The top stories. Minister of Finance Chris Sinclair says there will be no IMF program for Barbados. Three men have been held for a spate of mini-mart robberies and Jonathan Carter scores a half century. Welcome to Nation News for Monday, October 27, 2014. No matter where you are in the world, at home or abroad, Nation News keeps you connected with what's happening in Barbados. Through our website, video newscast, and online e-papers. So stay connected with Nation News. Your news, your time, your way. Some of government's programs to fix Barbados' ailing economy have been more successful than others. That is the report from Minister of Finance Chris Sinclair, who addressed the media today following last week's third quarter report from Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Delisle Worrell. Having gone through more than a year of implementing and managing the key elements of the program, I'm able to report to the nation that we have in fact seen appreciable gains towards achieving our objectives with several successes, some more significant than others, and some still slightly less than satisfactory results. Most notably among our successes has been the return of stability and confidence in the foreign exchange market. Indeed, based on the current figures before us, and which would have been shared with you in the last week's report by the Central Bank of Barbados on the economy of Barbados, it is clear that the fiscal consolidation program has been effective in restoring the balance to the foreign exchange market and further securing the Barbados dollar. The normal pattern of changes in foreign exchange reserves has been restored, and the reserves are currently equivalent to 15 weeks of import cover. This has also been underscored by positive growth in foreign inflows, net of outflows, which are $266 million more than for the same period last year. A large part of this, I am told, is as a result of a quiet but assured resurgence in the second home market sales, as developers report the movement of real estate inventory at a faster rate in the past 10 months than for the previous three years. Equally, Evidence is becoming clearer every day that external investors behind a positive shift in government policy on investment are seeing renewed opportunities on island. I would however hasten to add that in regards to this area of concern, we are not yet out of the woods and must continue to forge ahead with our efforts to further strengthen the FX market and grow foreign investments. The minister also stated emphatically that there would be no international monetary fund program for Barbados. In relation to the discussion about going to the IMF, we have said what our position is. Um, we, are not, we are not contemplating any IMF program at this stage. We do not think it is necessary. We believe that Barbadians can achieve uh, the objectives of the program that we have set ourselves. It is not going to be easy or painless. Um, but I know that the alternatives which um, some people are clamoring for will be far worse than they may suspect. So um, we've measured the situation and we feel at this stage that uh, that is not required at this stage. For more from the Minister's press conference, go to our website nationnews.com. Meanwhile, opposition leader Mia Montley has dismissed the briefing by Minister of Finance as, quote, a waste of time. People in Barbados are still no wiser than they were before. They do not know the budget date. They do not know where the expenditure cuts will come from. And they still do not know when the projects referred to repeatedly will start. What they do know is that there will be more taxes and more job losses put in more pressure on an already beleaguered social security system. This situation is now becoming untenable. Nothing will happen until confidence is restored. Clearly the time has come for the Prime Minister to recognize that speaking to the country is no longer an option. The country is hurting and it needs to hear from its democratically elected leader. Minister Sinclair and the government of the central bank have lost their credibility on these issues. Ms. Motley said the opposition will hold their press conference on Tuesday and economic spokesman Dr. Clyde Maskell will address the key issues. 
Workers in Barbados will not be scared into working under unfair circumstances for fear of losing their jobs. That is the word from General Secretary of the Barbados Workers Union, Tony Moore. Need to be aware that because there is an economic downturn, it should not suggest to them that workers will not stand on principle and issues that they find as impacting them and their security of employment. Um, Mr. The General, the CEO with the Bikes Holdings Group, he made those comments and I don't think that is any different to the view held by a number of employers out there that because there's a crisis and because there's evidence of some apparent desperation on, on the part of a labor force to access jobs, they should not be misguided into thinking that whatever did to show, that people will willingly accept. I hope that the demonstration by the workers of Banks Holdings would be seen as instructive by employers who hold that viewpoint. She was speaking after a meeting between BWU and Banks Holdings Limited officials Monday at Solidarity House. Employees of Banks Holdings Limited staged a work stoppage on Friday outside the company's Newton Christchurch headquarters, but returned to work later that day. The man accused of shooting a father and son last week during a robbery attempt has been remanded to Her Majesty's prison's Dodds. Ramon Ricardo Callender will return to court on November 25th. He is accused of aggravated robbery at Bab's Mini Mart last Monday, where Stephen and Dwight Babb were shot and injured. He is also accused of robbery at Acre Beach Hotel and Spa and Fair Deals Mini Mart. Callender has also been charged with Dwayne Alastair's Dahl and Roland Humphrey Marshall in connection with a robbery at First Stop Convenience Store and Villa Mart. They return to court on Tuesday. It seems the spirit of patriotism is not strong in some Barbadians. According to Minister of Culture Stephen Lashley, some Barbadians have been stealing the lights installed around the nation's roundabouts and he is appealing for them to desist. Mr. Lashley asks those who have been engaging in this act to reflect on what independence means to them, but said the police have been asked to keep an eye out for these scoundrels. Sajikor Life Incorporated is on board to have invested $25,000 to the ceremony. This year's lighting ceremony will be held in, on Saturday in Hero Square, the city. In sport, an unbeaten half-century by Barbadian Jonathan Carter has helped West Indies A to a 166-run lead against Sri Lanka A in the third and final test match. Carter is not out on 69 off 149 balls. West Indies have reached 183 for 7 in their second innings after scoring 282. Sri Lanka scored 299 in their first innings. Former NASCAR champion Kurt Busch and Susie Wolf are the two newest additions to the Race of Champions. The Race of Champions will be held at Bushy Park in December. And finally, when John Thornton visited the Doubletree Hotel in Connecticut last week, he apparently did not like the mop job being done by a female employee. So he allegedly grabbed it from the woman and began, in the words of the police reporting, quote, mopping aggressively to the point of mopping over the employee's shoes multiple times. The employee repeatedly asked Thornton to stop mopping, but he responded by backing her into a corner. The mess, along with threatening police, resulted in Thornton having to post a $20,000 bond. And that was The Nation News for Monday. For more news, log on to our website at nationnews.com, as well as on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter, and get your Midweek Nation on Wednesday.